Greetings, beloved. Welcome to Narrowgate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2023, beloved, the door of the ark is closing. The honors lies on individuals. If you want to be part of the ark, you have to run for your life. Our Father is wrapping up. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Praise the name of the Lord. We serve a powerful God, beloved, the greater I am, the one and only risen king. In him I hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. We continue, beloved. I am back. To God be the glory. Today is day six of our seven days of liquid fast. And I trust that you are doing great wherever you are. As we continue to pray for ourselves and for our family members. Glory be unto our Father, beloved, who is seeing us through each and every day. Beloved, we have entered the last and the most difficult season. And I have a message for you that I was given. That our father is looking for a total surrender. We all know that it is operation. Give Jesus your 100%. He wants us to totally surrender ourselves unto him. It is the only thing that will help us in this last season. Many of the saints are going through challenges already, beloved. Some it's physical pain, some financial constraints, some is just challenges in their household. So I am going to encourage you, beloved, with the word of God. You remember what Paul said to his epistle to the church in Galatia, chapter 5, verse 24. He said, all those that are Christ have crucified the flesh and its affections and lust. All that are Christ. We have shared, beloved, extensively about the earthy and the heavenly. So all that are Christ, his sheep, have crucified the flesh and its affections and lusts. Again, in his second epistle to Timothy, in chapter 3, verse 12, he said to Timothy, All that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Let us remember that, that all that will live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. We have entered the last season, beloved. We need to totally surrender to the Lord. It is the only way that we will come out of it. Our Father has revealed again through a vision that we are almost done. Praise the name of the Lord. But this season, it's going to be hard. Let us brace ourselves. And we do have a manual, beloved, that edify us and correct us and teach us. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to share from the book of Matthew chapter 10. Before I go to the story of Jesus just before the crucifixion. The last season is the most difficult. And I want us to learn, beloved, 
and understand what Jesus did on those last hours. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to read the word of God from the book of Matthew chapter 10. I will read from verse 36. The word of God says, And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the word of God, beloved. Jesus was telling his disciples. This is the message for us, beloved. For our dispensation. In this season that we are in, we need to remember the scriptures and meditate on them. Because most often, beloved, we tend to forget that it has been prophesied that we will encounter these challenges. That our enemies will be from our own household. So when you are facing persecution from your own household, you wonder why. It has been prophesied, beloved. Remember, Paul said to Timothy that all that will live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. Again, Paul said to the church in Galatia in chapter 4 verse 29, he said since then from the foundation of this earth, those that are of the flesh, those that are born of the flesh, persecute those that are born of the spirit. I have shared that, beloved. We now understand the earthy and the heavenly. So it has been happening since then. So let us not be discouraged when we are encountering challenges in our households because jesus told us beloved way before time that immense foes shall be they of his own household so let us be encouraged he continued and he said that if you love your father and your mother more than him you are not worthy of his own if your faith will be dependent on the opinion of your mother or your father, then you are not worthy of being his. If your faith is dependent on your family members, you are not worthy of him. If your faith is dependent on your children, you are giving excuses based on your own family members. Knowing very well that the word of God says they will be your enemies. But you still want to please them. You want to give up faith because they are persecuting you. It is part of prophecy. We need to hold on. We need to trust the Lord. Remember he said those who are born of God, they have overcome the world. I have shared the message of the elect. We need to rise above these challenges. Because in this season that we have entered, it's going to be more difficult. We need to stand our ground, beloved. Remember, Jesus said, I did not bring peace. I brought division. But we have to understand the context. He is the Prince of Peace, yes. 
But as we grow in him, time will come where division will come. Where a mother and a daughter will be divided. Where a mother and a child will be divided. And this is the season that we are in, beloved. Division is going to come. Because the earthy will always persecute the heavenly. It is written. It has been happening all the time. So let us remember and be encouraged. He said that if you are not prepared to carry your cross on daily basis, you cannot be mine. We have to carry the cross, beloved. No matter how hard. No matter how difficult, we are all going through challenges. Our Father is humbling us, beloved, in different areas. I want to encourage you, beloved, with the story of Jesus just before crucifixion. I love how St. Mark narrated the story. And I'm going to read from the book of uh, Gospel of St. Mark chapter 40. I will read from verse 32. The word of God says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to so amazed and to be very heavy. And said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. That's the word of God, beloved. And that was Jesus just before they took him for crucifixion. Jesus knew, beloved, that his purpose here on earth was to die for us on the cross. And he knew that it was going to happen that day. He knew that they were going to take him that day. He was away. The word of God says that he was exceedingly sorrowful. To a point of going to pray that if it was possible, let this cup pass. The word of God says, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Take away this cup. This alone, it makes us, beloved, understand the difficulties and the stress that he was under at that hour this was the last hours of his mission here on earth and i want us to learn beloved from this it was the most difficult he knew that he was going to suffer physical pain he knew that he was going to suffer rejection from his own people. I am talking his disciples. People who moved with him everywhere. People who saw every miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. It was prophesied that you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. 
And it happened like that, even though he told them before time that they will all run away from him. They said it's not possible. But he told them already that you are all going to run away and leave me alone. So he was feeling the reality of all prophecies. So beloved, it has been prophesied to us that our enemies will be from our own households. If we are not prepared to love God more than our own parents, more than our own children, we cannot be his. If we are not prepared to take our cross daily, we cannot be his. That is why in Matthew 6, 33, he said, we should seek him first. The kingdom of God must be a priority and the rest shall be added. So I want us to understand here, beloved, that Jesus knew that his primary purpose to come here on earth was to die on the cross. But the last hours of him accomplishing his mission here on earth, they were difficult. They were stressful. The word of God says he was exceedingly sorrowful. He was going to God to say, Father, I know everything is possible with you. Let this cup pass me, knowing very well that he came here on earth for that purpose. But he said, nevertheless, let your will be done. He totally surrendered unto the Lord because he knew that he was going to face physical pain. Rejection of being rejected by his own people. He was used to the rejection by the believers, those who call themselves the children of God, the Jews, the chosen. They rejected him. So he was used to that rejection. But this time, the rejection was going to come from his own disciples. Peter who was so close to the Lord, he denied him three times. The word of God says the third time he was even angry, saying that I do not know this man. Just imagine. He was left alone to suffer. So we can say, beloved, that the flesh does not want to be afflicted in any way. So he was 100% in the flesh. The flesh does not want to suffer persecution. The flesh does not want to be afflicted. That is why most time when we are faced with challenges, beloved, we want to quit. We want to give up. We want to say, God, take this away. I do not want this challenge in my life most of the time. And he knew that it is possible for God to stop it from happening. But he totally surrendered to God and he said, not my will, but your will. And he prayed in another gospels. You will hear that the angels of God came and strengthened him. And this is what we need to do, beloved. We are in our last hours in this journey. The most difficult, exceedingly sorrowful. And there is no amount of prayer, beloved, that you can pray. That Father, take away all these challenges. No, we have to go through them. We have to be tested. I told you, I shared in the series of The Chosen, that we were brought here for a mission. We will be tried. We will be persecuted. 
Because the earthy will always persecute the heavenly. And it has been prophesied that we will be tried. It is the only way for us to obtain the crown. According to James chapter 1 verse 12. And I want to encourage you again with what uh, Paul said in his second epistle to the church in Corinth in chapter 12. Similar to what Jesus said. Paul wrote there that he was blessed with abundance of visions and revelations. And God had to keep him humble. Therefore, he was given a thorn in his flesh to torment him. And he continued, he said, I sook the Lord three times that he must take away this messenger of Satan. And he said, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So Paul wanted God to take away the thorn that was tormenting him. The thorn that was humbling him. He was praying and seeking the Lord. The same like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, Abba Father, I know all things are possible with you. Let this cup pass. Take it away. Paul said the same thing. He said, I sook the Lord three times that take away this thorn in my flesh that is tormenting me. God did not take away the thorn. He did not remove the messenger of Satan that was tormenting him. He said instead, my grace is sufficient. The same way with Jesus. The angels came and strengthened him to go through what was prophesied. Praise the name of the Lord. So I read for you, beloved, that Paul, second epistle, to Timothy, he said that all that live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. And Jesus wrote unto us in Matthew chapter 10 that our enemies will be from our own households. We must love him more than we love our own parents our own children. There must not be a stumbling block. Blessed are the persecuted for the sake of gospel. We have to go through this, beloved. You cannot pray that, Father, let me have a joy ride until you come and fetch us. No. The prophecies have been written. The same like Jesus. He said, I know that all things are possible with you, God. And he knew that his purpose here on earth was to die on the cross. So beloved, yes, it has been prophesied. But the reality, the reality, beloved, it's always hard. That's why Paul said, I sook the Lord three times. We have to endure. God said unto Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And he said to him, in your weakness, that is when he is strengthening you. That time when we feel we cannot go on, that is when we are dying to self. That's why Paul again said, I die daily. Praise the name 
of the law. He said again in the book of uh, Galatians that it is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. So, beloved, we have to be encouraged. We have to go through these trials and temptations. The last one is going to be hard. But we have to hold on. The same like Jesus. He was praying. He knew that he needed strength to finish his race. And the strength was given unto him. And he finished his race. So let us cry to our father each day, beloved, for the strength so that we can finish our race. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, he said, if you are not prepared to carry your cross daily, you cannot be his. So let us endure, beloved. The last hours, they are going to be difficult. We have been tested in this journey. It's not yet over. Let us brace ourselves. Paul continued after he was told that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. He said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's the word of God, beloved. So we need to take pleasure in our challenges, persecution, reproach. Because that is when our strength is being perfected. During our weakness. That is when we are dying to self. That is when we are becoming more like him. Even if you pray that father take away these challenges. It's not going to help. Paul prayed. Jesus prayed. But they had to finish the race. They are being strengthened in their weakness. That is when their strength is being perfected. God said he will never give us more than we can handle. Whatever he has allowed on our way, his grace is enough to see us through. So in this season, beloved, let us remember that when you are facing persecutions at home, when it's difficult, it can be your spouse. It can be your parents. It can be your children. Standing before you in this journey. Not understanding you. Calling your names. That you have joined a cult. Saying you have changed. Calling relatives to come and talk to you. Just pray for them. It has been prophesied. We have to pray for strength. The same way Jesus was praying. The word of God says he took Peter, John, and James. And go forward and pray. So let us pray, beloved, so that we finish our journey strong. Praise the name of the Lord. Our Father is looking for a total surrender. We are almost done. We have entered the last hours of our journey. Let us brace ourselves and remain focused. Persecutions have been prophesied. Distress, trials, temptations, all of those, we will suffer them. Let us remember that. His grace is sufficient.
So that's it for this message. I love you all. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.